uh, you can call it ancient forest. I call them old growth. Remnant forest. That's what I've been calling it lately. Ancient forest. Big old trees. Fatties. Pumpkins. Um, mom. Forest primeval. Remnant old growth. Grandmother trees. Rare old growth. Old growth. The old growth forest. It's old growth forest. Oh, you bet. I love old growth and ancient forest too. <laughs> I think, you know, old growth forest is important to us uh, ecologically and culturally. And uh, uh, it's very clear, you know, that the, uh, these kinds of forests uh, provide habitat for an array of organisms that don't find suitable habitat elsewhere. They perform certain services in an extremely effective fashion. They're the best watershed protection that we could possibly have and uh, we don't have very much of it left. Well, first of all, you see all age classes represented here, which is vital to the ecosystem to have all the age classes because you have wildlife that's dependent on the different stages, all able to be here. There is a timber sale, the West Point timber sale on the Klamath National Forest um, that we managed to stop with litigation. Um, and once we'd stopped that sale, um, literally the same week, there was a, a publication in a scientific uh, journal of the first paper describing a new salamander species that's found only there on Earth, the Scott Bar salamander. And, you know, it's just it's incredibly exciting to know that we're here in a place so old and yet um, where there's so much still to learn, um, so many discoveries yet to make. We're on the eastern slope of South Fork Mountain above the wild and scenic South Fork of the Trinity River, which is some of the cleanest water we've got around here. Um, one of the reasons it's cold and clean good habitat for salmon and steelhead is because big trees like this, you know, hold the soil together, keep the temperature moderated, and um, maintain an ecosystem where big trees continue to hold on. Trees do one of those uh, amazing things that we learn about in grade school science classes but occasionally need to be reminded. They are, trees are made of air. They're made of carbon and that carbon comes out of the atmosphere. They take this trace amounts of CO2 out of the atmosphere and they turn that into cellulose and the wood that makes these tremendously beautiful trees like we see here. Um, and that carbon taken out of the atmosphere is just what we need in order to put the brakes on global warming. Uh, by keeping this, the, that carbon stored safely in the tree, it's not in the atmosphere where it's helping to warm our climate.
Northwest forests are really unique in the world in their ability to store huge amounts of carbon. They, the trees grow very large, they live for a very long time, so these are really great places to store carbon. It's a unique situation on the planet. Uh, from 1960 right up until the early 90s, the Forest Service mission was to convert the forest into plantations, into tree farms. And this is a good example of what results. A landscape of roads, clear cuts, and failed plantations. After 40 years of industrial logging, I, we're lucky to have this survive. Well, I'm Dan Sagata. I'm the uh, operations staff on the Central Coast Ranger District. Well, the Sayuslaw Slaw Forest is uh, all on the coast range of Oregon, uh, primarily between the Umpqua and, uh, and Tillamook area. Uh, 6,000 or 600,000 acres and uh, highly, highly productive uh, ground as far as growing trees. We were known for years and years as the, the timber production forest. engaged with you know, some unlikely partners, timber industry people, members of community, etc. Focus on, on projects on the national forest that we believe can improve things ecologically while also you know creating social benefits, jobs, wood products. Thinning in low risk places where you're not hurting watersheds, you're not building roads, you're not creating risk of landslides or erosion, but where you can take out little trees in such a way that, that it uh, stimulates the growth of the remaining trees, it creates habitat for critters that need older forests. To do exactly what we're doing, every national forest is a little bit different, but I, I think every national forest has the opportunity to look for those, or has the option to look for those, those kind of opportunities. perception that it's protected has actually become a problem. Until we've protected the mature and old growth forest we've got left, the incentives for the Forest Service to cut these forests are so overwhelming that they can't seem to help themselves. That's one of the places that Congress can help a whole lot, is to take some of the very controversial issues off the table, like old growth, like roadless areas, so we can concentrate on getting on with the kind of work uh, that we really need to do to restore uh, our forests and streams. We can't afford to spend the rest of our lives battling this issue forever. Let's protect the rest of the old growth. Let's reach an accord with the timber industry, improving habitat through restoration of plantations, and let's move on. You know, the Pacific Northwest used to be blanketed with old growth forests, and we're, we're down to about 10 percent. And uh, this is the last that we have, and there are uh, thousands of species that depend upon old growth forests. Old growth forests give us our cleanest water. They are some of our finest recreation areas. So we could live without old growth forests, but life wouldn't be as good. <laughs>